Goldman Sachs famously once said that blockchain could change and disrupt everything. But Dr. Julian Hosp, the co-founder of 10X and author of cryptocurrency, simply explained, went one step further and said more specifically that Ethereum will disrupt everything. Hi guys, this is Arya from Edureka and today's session is about Ethereum development. Today's session is meant to provide you with a step-by-step -step insight into the development of Ethereum platform. Just to be more specific, let me show you what more you're going to learn in today's class. So we'll start with a comparison for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then I'll define Ethereum for you. Moving further, I'll discuss the technology stack or the components for developing a decentralized application. And finally, I'll show you an interesting demo on a decentralized application myself. Sounds good? All right, let's start with the first topic of today's class, and that is Bitcoin versus Ethereum. The primary difference between the two coins lies in their purpose of development. While Bitcoin was designed as an alternative to the fiat currencies with a vision to decentralize the payment system, Ethereum's developer had a motive to provide a platform for developing decentralized applications. Another important distinction is that Bitcoin's script is Turing incomplete, while Ethereum a Turing complete one, which means that complex programming and application development can be very well done on Ethereum. Apart from that, Ethereum's process transactions faster than Bitcoin's. Average block times in the case of Ethereum is around 10 to 15 seconds, while in Bitcoin it is approximately 10 minutes per block. These were some basic differences in the two platforms. However, we have a dedicated video for comparing the two cryptocurrencies. You can go refer the video from Edureka's YouTube channel. All right, let's proceed. So having compared the two most popular blockchain applications, you can conclude that both were designed to serve different purposes. Now let's get started with Ethereum. So what exactly is Ethereum? Ethereum is a distributed public blockchain network that allows the development of smart contracts for blockchain and decentralized applications. Vitalik Buterin conceptualized Ethereum with a vision to decentralize the world. His goal was to build a platform for developers to write programs on the blockchain. To accomplish his goal, he used similar blockchain designs and protocols as that of Bitcoins and improvised it to support applications beyond currency issuance. Anyone across the globe can connect with Ethereum's blockchain to develop a program and can maintain the current state of the network, hence the term world computer. Ethereum platform gives us endless opportunities to develop blockchain based applications by writing basic building blocks of programs called smart contracts. OK, so now that I've spoken so much about smart contracts, it's only fair that I tell you all what they are. So the phrase smart contracts was proposed by Nick Schwabo with a vision to extend functionality of electronic transaction methods such as POS, which stands for point of sale, to the digital realm. Smart contracts help you exchange property, shares, or anything of value in a transparent, conflict-free way while avoiding the services of a middleman. Simply put, it can be defined as a contract that self-executes and handles the enforcement, the management, performance, and payment. It is just a computer code that facilitates a transfer of digital assets like money, content, property, shares, or anything of value for that matter. Now the question you might ask here is, where is the code executed? That is the Ethereum virtual machine. The Ethereum virtual machine or the EVM is the engine in which transaction code gets executed. EVM enables the development of potentially thousands of different applications all on one platform. Contracts written in a smart contract specific programming language are compiled into bytecode which an EVM can read and execute. All right, now that I've told you the basics of Ethereum, let's now talk about Ethereum's development environment. Firstly, we'll be discussing the local development environment. So just like every other application development, Ethereum's development consists of three key phases. The development starts with the code, the written code is then compiled and finally tested. Now let's discuss the components of decentralized application development. Now for development, you would require some key components specific to Ethereum. So we would definitely need Ethereum's clients, browsers, libraries, frameworks, and front-end tools. So let's discuss the clients first. Ethereum's clients interact with the Ethereum network. Developers write up the contracts, which are then converted into EVM bytecode via an EVM compiler and uploaded onto the blockchain using an Ethereum client. The clients implement Ethereum protocols. These clients will replicate all blocks from the network to the local system until and unless they're a light client mode. These clients mines Ethereum's blocks and manages Ethereum's account, and also they send and receive Ethereum's cryptocurrency, which is Ether. Ethereum's clients expose several methods over JSON RPC for interacting with them from within an application. There are various clients supporting the Ethereum network. Out of those many, the most popular implementation nowadays are Go Ethereum, also referred to as Geth, and the other one is Parity. So Geth is an official Golang implementation of the Ethereum protocol. It is written in Go, fully open source, and licensed under the GNU LGPL version 3 license. Go Ethereum is available either as a standalone client called Geth that you can install on pretty much any operating system or as a library that you can embed in your Go, Android, or iOS projects. Next, we are going to talk about Parity. 
So as you can see by Parity's GitHub page, Parity is another popular Ethereum client. As claimed on their official website, the fastest and most secure way of interacting with the Ethereum blockchain. This client powers much of the infrastructure as of the public Ethereum network and is used by companies and users alike. Parity is written in Rust language, which offers reliability, performance, and clarity of code. It is developed by Ethcore, which was founded by the members of Ethereum Foundation. Key features of Parity are small memory footprint and fast performance. Here is a GitHub link you can use for downloading Parity. All right, so we've seen Ethereum's clients, which is required to connect to the Ethereum network. Now let's talk about the browser, which is required to establish a connection between a user and a blockchain. So we have two popular browsers, one being MetaMask and the second being Mist browser. So MetaMask allows you to run Ethereum dApps right in your browser without running a full Ethereum node. It is a plugin for Chrome and uses a service called Infura. Infura has Get or Parity blockchain nodes running on it. So let me show you guys Chrome extension page for MetaMask. So as you can see, according to their site, it's an extension that injects the Ethereum Web3.js API into every website's JavaScript context so that decentralized applications can directly read from the blockchain. It's a really useful tool if you're being a developer. So the next browser that we're gonna discuss is Mist. Mist is a full browser and has its own blockchain node implemented. So let me quickly open Mist's GitHub page before we get into discussing it. So according to Mist's GitHub page, Mist is a full browser. It has its own blockchain node implemented and Mist is integrated with the Get node. So basically, you can store Ether, send transactions, deploy contracts, and more with Mist. You can use a native application to play around on the blockchain or testnet while you get the hang of this whole blockchain thing. Super useful for quick transactions. All right, next in the stack comes the libraries. So libraries are super useful. Who'd like an application without an interface, right? If you're building an app, you need libraries to help you interact with the blockchain. And there are several libraries like web3.js, a JavaScript library, and then we have web3.java, which is a web3 Java Ethereum decentralized application API. Also, we have Ethereum and Ethereum Ruby as an option. But out of all these, web3.js would be your go-to option. If you want to build a DAP, you're going to get very personal with web3.js library. Web3.js is going to be the interface you will use to interact with the blockchain if you're trying to make something that people won't entirely hate. So what Web3.js does is it takes your smart contract code and converts it into bytecode that the Ethereum virtual machine can understand and compile without you actually have to explicitly code all this stuff. It makes your life much easier as a developer. All right, let's skip right to the good part, the frameworks. So as you may have noticed, most of the work that we've been doing was pretty manual. There are some tools that make actually development a lot easier. Let's see some of them. The two of them that we are going to discuss today are Truffle and Embark. They're the most popular of Ethereum's development frameworks. So let's talk about Truffle first. So I have Truffle's homepage opened out here. And as you can see on their homepage, it's installed by the node package manager. So until now, the only way we could interact with our contracts was to deploy them manually through a node console into a test RPC node and then load them using Web3.js. Now let me introduce you to Truffle. Truffle is a development environment, testing framework, asset pipeline for Ethereum, aiming to make life as an Ethereum developer much, much easier. Truffle provides the building blocks to quickly create, compile, deploy, and test blockchain apps. Although Truffle is considered as the most suitable framework, it seems we do have a second choice here with Embark as another popular framework for building and testing and developing your apps. Okay, so now that we've talked about the frameworks that help us develop Ethereum applications, let's talk about the editors and tools. So the first editor that comes to mind is the Remix IDE. So the Remix IDE, it is a browser-based compiler and an IDE that enables users to build Ethereum contracts with the Solidity language and to debug the transactions as well. The written code can be compiled using the SOLC compiler, and SOLC is also your translator for smart contract language to Solidity to Ethereum's bytecode. Then we have editors for Solidity code programming. Visual Studio Code is a source code editor developed by Microsoft. Another popular editor is Atom. It is a free open source text editor and has a lot of cool features like you could install packages that could highlight Solidity code or you could choose a theme for your own liking. After that, we have bundlers that are written in JavaScript and help us bundle our modules. Two of the most popular being Webpack and Browserify. With Webpack, you can bundle your assets, your images, the scripts, and your styles as well. You have to write your code and bundle it with Webpack. It's just that easy. Another JavaScript bundler is Browserify. The tool allows you to write Node.js style modules that compile for your use in the browser. Just like Node, you just write your modules in separate files, exporting external methods and properties. Last but not the least, you also need to have Node downloaded and installed on your computer 
as you would need to manage the packages from the node repository. Looks like we've covered all major development stacks. Or have we? Guess what's missing? Looks like I haven't talked about the front end development tools yet. So for developing a front end, you can use any tools and technologies that you want. You can be creative with the front ends by using any of the following frameworks like Angular made by Google, Vue.js, which is a beautiful combination of React and Angular both. Or you could just use React, which is made by Facebook and is a quick front end development tool. Or you can just create a basic HTML and JavaScript page for testing your decentralized application. Now here's an important information I want to share with you guys. For developing front end using these tools, we use Web3.js libraries to connect to the Ethereum node. All right, now that we have everything ready, we need to test our decentralized application on an Ethereum network. Following on the list of Ethereum test networks that are available for testing decentralized applications. We have the Robston network, Coven network, and the Ringby test network. Now I've opened all their GitHub pages from before. I'll leave a link for them down below. So as you can see on the Robston GitHub page, Robston reproduces the current production environment that is the system and the network conditions on the live Ethereum mainnet. It can be used with both GET and Parity for testing purposes. Ether can be mined or requested from the MetaMask faucet or from the Robston faucet. Another test network that we have is Coven. So Coven doesn't reproduce the current production environment totally as it uses a proof of authority. Also, Coven doesn't support GET. Ether can't be mined here as well as they're required to be requested from the faucet. Okay, so many a times with these test networks, there comes a time that even the faucet will not give you the amount of ether you requested for testing your applications. What do you do that time? So at those times, you can create a custom network from your local development host. This can be very easily done with the MetaMask browser. Okay, guys, so now that we finished discussing every aspect of Ethereum from its libraries to its frameworks to the text editors, now it's time that I execute the demo that I promised you guys about at the beginning of the session. So here's what we're going to use for our decentralized application. We're going to make use of the Truffle framework that we spoke about, the Webpack bundler, and then we're going to start the test blockchain network, also called test RPC or Ganache CLI, because that's where we're going to deploy our decentralized application. And finally, we're going to integrate the test RPC accounts with MetaMask that will create a bridge that allows you to visit the distributed web of tomorrow in your browser today. It allows you to run Ethereum dApps right in your browser without running a full Ethereum node. And that is it. Your decentralized application is ready to play around with. All right, let's cut to the chase and let me show you a working demo of a decentralized application. This decentralized application is to give you a sense of how to structure a front end application for easy development and testing. So, this is what our final decentralized application will look like. We're going to use the Metacoin contract that is easily available to us through Truffle boxes. So, first of all, to get started, we need to create an empty folder. So, head over to your desktop and create an empty folder. So I'm going to name mine Metacoin. So after this, you have to open up your command prompt and you have to navigate to the folder you just made. So CD desktop and Metacoin. Once you're in the folder, you just have to run the command truffle. So while this is unboxing, let me tell you guys a bit about Webpack and what it does. So what does a build process need to do in truffle? In general, it's simple. All it does is it turns high level code like ES6, SAS, JSX, or other template like codes into vanilla JavaScript, HTML, and CSS artifacts, and then move those artifacts into the build folder alongside our contract artifacts. Now that you get a hint, let me tell you what Webpack does in this tutorial. The application uses Webpack to compile the application's front end code and move the artifacts into the build folder. So you guys have to make sure that you have Truffle installed and also Webpack installed via NPM. Okay, so now that we're done unboxing our project into the directory, it's only fair that we go ahead and check out all that we've done. So go ahead to your folder that we had created, and now you'll see all these different kind of folders and files that will help with our project. So the app folder contains all the JavaScript, the style sheets, and the HTML for your front end. And then we have the contracts folder. The contracts folder basically contains all the Solidity contracts that we had written. Our main contract out here is the metacoin.sol, and it has come pre-made from the Truffle Unbox. Next, we have the migrations folder. Migrations folder contains this JavaScript file that handle all the migrations of a smart contract to the application programming interface that we're going to be using to actually deploy them. Next, we have the node modules folder, which has all the dependencies for our project that have been downloaded using the node package manager. So next, we have the Truffle JavaScript file, which is basically used to connect to the test network. So we need to edit this a bit for our project to work. So go ahead and open it up in your favorite text editor. I'm going to be using Sublime Text. 
and out here where you see host you just have to type in local host and you change the port number to 8545 because that's the port number our test network will be running on okay so now that we have this set up you save the file and you close your editor and next we have to run our test network so for that go ahead and open a command prompt window and run the command ganache tli if you already have ganache installed this should work if you don't have it installed you can always use npm ganache cli as your installing command as you can see we have 10 accounts that are running on the port localhost 8545 now all we need to do is actually compile our code and migrate it so to do that thing we go back to where we had actually started and this place should be in the folder that we had created that is in metacoin out here you have to run the command truffle.cmd compile and wait for your code to get compiled so what truffle.cmd compile does is that it runs the code through a solc compiler and compiles all the contracts that are in your contracts folder the next thing that we do is migrate our project to the test network for that we have to run a simple command that is truffle and migrate now this will give you an error if you're not already running the test network in the background that is this window out here it's going to connect to that window and yep we're done and we're connected now all we need to do is go npm run dev and this will start up our project so as you can see that it's already saying that the project is running at localhost 8080 and all we have to do is go to our web browser and open up a new window and go to localhost 8080 okay so as you guys can see that our decentralized application for metacoin is already up and running on localhost 8080 but still the last step is missing okay so the last step that remains is that we have to connect our test rpc accounts to metamask the way we do that is we have to go and copy this phrase that was created while you started ganas cli so this is the mnemonic that you have to copy down now you return back to chrome and you click on metamask once you click on metamask you'll see the screen that tells you to log in so we won't be actually logging in through an account we'll be using that phrase that we had just copied so you just go and copy down paste that phrase out here you put in a new password and you confirm that password press ok now we have to tell metamask that we are looking at localhost 8545 and now as you can see that we have successfully connected all our accounts to this decentralized application that is visible through the proof that we have 10,000 metacoins to spend on account one now since that we are going to spend that account we need another address to go and send those metacoins to so go out here and you create another account now this account will automatically take the address so you have to go here and copy the address to the clipboard so we'll be sending our account balance from account one to account two so you put the address as account two and you set the amount as anything you wish so i'm going to send this guy 200 coins and you go ahead and press send metacoin out here you create submit and just refresh your page so as you can see 200 coins was deducted from this account and clearly they must have been added to the another account so we'll go and check there so we go to account two and we reload and as you guys can see that this account has 200 meta coins that we had sent it so guys that was the end of our demo and that actually showed you guys how a decentralized application actually works while testing and developing we have many such projects and activities in our edureka's ethereum developers course if you guys are interested you guys can check that out edureka provides live instructor-led online training and leaving that aside we also provide a 24 7 support team that is there to guide you through your technical and non-technical issues that are related to your course once you enroll for a batch you will be provided with a lifetime access to edureka's carefully crafted learning management system the learning management system will contain your class recording presentations pdf and information regarding your project at edureka once you enroll for a course you can even reassign your batch at your own convenience if you're not satisfied with a single go through of the course you can always sign up for future batches n number of times classes that you miss are recorded and uploaded to your lms just to make sure you really never miss out on anything okay so guys that's it from me today i hope you all learned something from this session goodbye i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!